Duelist AI, use your memories. Tell me about your initial report on my Gladiator Beast deck. In my initial report on your Gladiator Beast deck, I rated it at a 43% win rate against the current metagame. The Gladiator Beast deck has notable weaknesses against popular decks in the meta. For example, cards like Nibiru, the primal being can significantly disrupt Gladiator Beast plays by removing their monsters from the field. Decks that can negate monster effects or have high board wipe potential also pose serious threats. To improve the deck's win rate, consider enhancing its consistency, adding more protective and disruptive elements, and optimizing the card choices for the current metagame. A 43% win rate, huh? That's where you calibrate my power? Foolish AI, you need more training. The time has come for me to not only show the power of my deck, but also show my strength at the duelist. This time, I won't miss. Long ago, when dueling was still young, an archetype was created, coded in ancient ritual, and bathed in sacrifice. These ancient warriors, known as gladiators, participated in duels to entertain the people on behalf of their emperor, bread, and circuses. In those times, most men escaped the Colosseum's cage with their lives. Most men. The time has come to break free from the chains that bind and prepare your dueling spirit for enlightenment as I introduce a new method of dueling to the Colosseum. Behold, salvation from Tier Zero metagames. Behold, the artificial intelligence that solved Yu-Gi-Oh! Behold, the equation that draws the perfect hand. The time has finally come to democratize all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s competitive knowledge and put it in the hand of every duelist in the world. The time has finally come. To never miss. The hypergeometric distribution is a statistical method used to calculate the probability of drawing a specific number of successful outcomes, key cards, and a set number of draws, your opening hand, from a finite population your deck. This is a powerful tool for Yu-Gi-Oh deck building, helping you understand the likelihood of drawing specific cards and ensuring consistent deck performance in competitive play. The hypergeometric distribution is a valuable technique for any serious duelist. By leveraging this method, you can build more consistent competitive decks, enhancing your chances of dueling success. Yes, my boys, the time has finally come for me to share my ultimate secret. While working with the AI, I discovered the hypergeometric distribution. This statistical method allows us to compete against the meta with a rogue deck. See, with every deck, there is a one card combo linchpin. If your deck doesn't have that, your deck's not dueling. And in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, in the TCG, and in all variations of Yu-Gi-Oh!, this is true. So, the fact of the matter is, in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s gameplay, what we're trying to do is execute our one-card combo. Now, 
more powerful decks, the most mainstream powerful decks in both Yu-Gi-Oh and Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel allows your, them to play at least two to three engines. And every engine allows two to three, maybe one to two summons. Maybe one to two summons. And these summons together creates the combo line that creates an inboard. Now, why do we mention this? Why does that matter? Because what matters when we play against that is what key cards we need to select so that we can execute our one card combo. Now in my Gladiator Beast deck, the one card combo within is with Gladiator Beast Dragasis. This card allows us to summon two cards, which allows us to execute our win condition. And because this card is located in the extra deck, there's low risk that it can ever be affected by our opponent unless they're playing something like Cash Tira. That being said, it frees up four cards in our hand to, to utilize as key cards. Now, what are key cards in the Gladiator Beast deck? And then later we'll talk about key cards in your deck. But what are the key cards in Gladiator Beast deck? The key cards in my Gladiator Beast deck are my go second board breaking cards. My go second board breaking cards is what I'm truly after. I'm not after the starter or extender like my opponent. I am after my board breakers. So I set my AI to provide the hypergeometric distribution rate for a 40 card deck to draw 2.5 in the opening hand. Meaning, in the opening hand, out of 100 duels, I will open 80% of the time 2.5. And the reason why we want to go for 80% is because Beyond 80%, we're looking at something called hyper-consistency. And when you get to hyper-consistency, we're talking about something different. And we don't want hyper-consistency. Right now, we're talking about the hyper-geometric distribution rate of my deck. And because of it, I have been provided in the opening five cards, what? 2.5. This time, it's manifested as three. One, two, three. Now, you might ask, why is that even relevant? Because I opened with these specific cards. I now have an opportunity to disrupt my opponent one time and destroy anything they build. And if they do not have a response after that, I can execute my one card combo just as they wish to execute theirs on the first turn. This is the genius of the system that I have created. I have shown you how to utilize the AI. I have created the text that allows you to return to the game, learn the basics. But this is advanced knowledge about deck building, about perfect deck building that would allow you to play the game for the first time ever. And if you're a competitive duelist, it allows you to compete at beyond, it allows you to go to the next level. This video is chock full of knowledge. All right, my boys, welcome to season 32 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I've decided to dedicate myself to being a full-time duelist and not a full-time content creator, my boy. What does that mean to you? What does that mean about this YouTube channel? That means that I'm dedicating myself to the duel for whatever that means. And the content will be reported here on this channel. All my dueling discoveries. So if you want to be a dueling engineer, if you want to learn how to improve your deck and you want to watch me defeat the meta with future technology today, hit that like and subscribe button because we got more to come. We've got more power, we've got more discoveries, more things beyond the hypergeometric distribution, more things beyond it. But this is how mathematics helps win duels. Probability and statistical theory, distribution theory, 
changes everything. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the rule of two. You have heard that before. You've heard that before in the Star War, but we ain't talking pew pew and pew pew. No, we're not talking about that today. No, we're talking about the rule of two. You see, when you open your hand for the very first time, you get five cards, five cards. And we must understand that in the opening hand, if we're talking about probability and statistics, you can never look for just one card because that number and that combination is always one in 40. You know, what's the odds of drawing any one card? One in 40. By adding multiple copies, it changes that odds. We all know that. But by playing against our opponents, we know that Maxi and Ash is more effective than just Maxi or just Ash. So the combination of two is deadly. So what we are looking for are unique combinations of two that we can set within our number of key cards so that we can ask the AI for the hypergeometric distribution rate of those cards. Therefore, we will open with a pairing of those two cards. So what are the 19 cards in my new Horde Simseti Tribe Gate Gladiator Beast the Dick? Where is it? Where is it? Where's my combinations of two? I'll show you my 19 cards. Now, I didn't share this with you previously. Um, I definitely could have, but I didn't, but this is the point for it. Now in a 40 card deck, the hypergeometric distribution rate for 2.5 cards in your opening hand, which is 80% draw rate, is open on that. 80% of 2.5 is 19 and 21. The hypergeometric distribution rate for a 60 card deck is 2832 for the same 2.5. Okay? We're not done cooking yet. Because we know these numbers and we do the rule of two, we're planning on opening with the two cards. So what are my 19? Triple Max C, one effect Valor, double Ash, uh, Nibiru, triple Dark Ruler No More, Lightning Storm, Ultimate Slayer, double Forbidden Droplet, triple Evenly Matched. This is my 19 cards. Now you might also ask, why three of this or two of that? That is all preference. None of that matters unless you unless you mind drawing two copies of that card in your opening hand. So I run three maxi because I don't mind if I get maxi on the draw and I don't mind if I open with two copies of maxi. That's just what that means. The 2.5 means the third copy is the 0.5. So if you're looking for the variable to, to, to understand what 0.5 means, it's the card that you're running at three. So what's the card that I run at three in my 19? I wanna see that Maxi, give it to me. I wanna see Dark Ruler No More, give it to me. I wanna see Evenly Match. And what do I have in the first opening hand that I drew just for you for this demonstration? One copy of Dark Ruler No More, one copy of Max C. And keep in mind that I choose to go second every duel. So because I know, thanks to the AI, that 75% of people choose to go first, that means 75% of the games, I will be in an optimal situation for this hand. Meaning that I will get to play 75% of my games guaranteed. If I win them, it's up to my skill. This equalizes the game. The hypergeometric distribution rate defeats luck and also defeats uh, RNG. Because of the hypergeometric distribution rate, it aligns with the algorithm. 
Now, in case you were wondering how to even execute this technique, I'm going to give you some simple instructions. Number one, you want to follow the directions from the analysis video that I did in season 31. In that video, I outlined how to provide the AI your deck. It's a multimodal system, meaning that it can take pictures. It can take um, your writings on a page. You can take a picture of your writings and upload it. You can, however you get your deck list to it, get your deck list into it. You can type your deck list, put the deck list in. And once you get the deck list saved, tell it to save it to its memory because you're gonna be um, providing updates. Now, after you've done that, you want to identify what your key cards are. What are your key cards? For me, my key cards are, as I told you, the 19 board breaker cards and or go second cards. So 19 cards, 19 slots out of the 40 card deck are dedicated to the hypergeometric distribution. The rest of the cards are dedicated to me executing my combo. Now, if you wanna change that up, you can always change it up and ask for different rates, ask for different combinations, ask for help. But once you get that information in there, you're good to go on the hypergeometric distribution combination. All right, my boys. So this is a little bit of a bonus for people who stuck around in this video. Not only do you get to see some hypergeometric distribution action in play, but you also get to see the new Horus in action. So what's cool about this deck is observation from a running three engines is hard to break on three engines, especially when they synergize well with the rule of two. Also, um, the horse engine has a draw, so that's also really good. Also, hyper geometric distribution. We run one lightning storm. I think we run one of these at one. I think this is at one and these are at three. So hyper geometric distribution. And then the other two cards happen to be Horus engine. But if the other two cards, if any of the cards are Horus engine, that's golden because Horus gives you a draw. But the uh, uh, if we get into Tri Brigade, you know, even better. Then we also have our draw that helps, you know, our draw for turn. So this is just really good. Hypergeometric distribution is cooking. We don't know who our opponent is, but we already know based off of math, we will have a fair play at this game. So let's go. All right, it's tier limit. I never play the ash on this because I like to get the ash on a normal summit card. And if I get an ash on a normal summit card and they got more plays after that, it is what it is. But I always ash the normal summit card and never ash the spell card because you want to ash the card that says once per turn that also takes up an action that is once per turn, which I have found to be most advantageous when you're counting trades, mathematics, probabilities. That's just what I found. Doesn't matter <laughs> any other opinion or how other people think about it, but this is just what I found. So here's a normal summon. This is, uh, you know, and if they're normally, if they're normal summoning Rhino Heart, they're, they're hard up anyway. So normal summon, Ash. And we're just gonna kill that. Hit this with the Ash. This is a diamond before the uh, ranks turned over, by the way. And then he pops off Tactics Thrust, which I'm like, goo. But then I think he makes the misplay of a lifetime because Thrust only lets you put it in your hand. If I got monsters on field, I do not have monsters. So put it face down, sir, you maniac. Ends his turn. So uh, so just because my opponent doesn't have viable threats on the field and then back row, because I was a smart duelist and utilized my 2.5 resources set aside by the hypergeometric distribution to negate his play. Don't be mad because I got extra cards because I'm just that good. But oh, uh, and guess what we drew into? Tri Brigade. So now we're in our Tri Brigade engine 
and we're in to our horse engine. And because we're in our tri-brigade horse engine, that's going to give us enough gas for our opponent to react to. And when everything is safe and clear, when it's clear, clear that there's going to be no more trouble, here comes the gladiator V's. So let's get our horse stuff started. Activate search deck, get him seti. Him seti's gonna send back Dark Ruler no more. Then we send our two to go get King Sarcophagus and draw into more Tri Brigade. Wonderful. Then we send one card, send a Nerval, send another Wing Beast, add another Tri Brigade, then summon the Wing Beast, summon the Beast Warrior, summon the Spellcaster, link to. Oh, yes, the hypergeometric distribution is strong at work here, my boy. Now, here comes the Tear Laments Havnish. Now, this card is going to mill top three to deck. Now, what is disgusting and dangerous? The hypergeometric distribution with Tear Laments should be insane once someone calibrates it specifically with the rule of two and a distribution rate that works well with the graveyard effects. When someone does that, that's going to be incredible. But guess what? His deck is not calibrated with the distribution rate. So guess what's going to happen? He's going to use his effect to mill three, and he's going to miss. He missed. He missed. His deck's not calibrated, my boy. Now, see? This is what I'm talking about. Calibration, the rule of two, with your effects, plus the distribution rate makes your decks consistency and the effects just just run like clockwork he doesn't have that consistency in his deck which is why he was able to be stopped by ash blossom in tillament then when he actually got to mill his deck he missed his meal because his distribution rates is off regardless if you know about this concept you're still using it in every duel this is what's amazing about this so now that he's milled his deck and missed free reign to continue because if he's got more cards he's got you know his face down he can't use that we know that that's branded but the cards in his hand are still not known so i'm still able to bait more situations by continuing to play due to the additional resources that i received from the combination of king sarcophagus and the tri brigade setting the coliseum's stage for the gladiation now it's time we summon the gladiator beast and it's time to attack since he missed with this we know the face down is nothing free reign we attack now this is the beauty of it okay so imagine this i want you to really think about this think about this in tar in terms of card economy the gladiator beast combo is at zero because regardless of what is happening here on the field, the card that brought it out was Fractal. Fractal banished two resources that weren't on the field from the graveyard to summon one card. This one card is going to be fruitful and multiply. Now the one card is two cards. The two card is one card. The one card is two cards. Now look, the one card has become two cards. And now one of the two cards has become one card. We have now went to 1.5 cards. Look, 1.5 cards. This is, this is an example of 1.5. So look, this card is the one. And since we were able to summon this this could be the 0.5 or you could think about it vice versa because now we're about to go from 1.5 to two cards and when we get to two cards here because we're going to add this card back now we're 1.5 to two cards so now we're technically up two cards we're, we're like up two cards so we kind of got a ghost card because our ghost card was the card that was summoned from the effect of the tri brigade which is why we, you know, represented in three. So this is this is just what's, what's insane about the math, about how we're able to get a win because we mathematically shouldn't be able to win with Gladiator Beast because the effects don't line up. But when we use the hypergeometric distribution, 
to get rid of all the obstacles. We can use a ghost card to be fruitful and multiply. Now, we're gonna use the ghost card, the comeback, to bring back another card that can play another card, okay? What does it do? It takes away two cards. The math. This is why you mathematically win with the Gladiator Beast because the ghost card that was zero is starting to become pluses and those pluses in the combo line are minuses to the opponent. Not to mention the minuses that can come from Horus not to mention the minuses that can come from Tri Brigade and Shoe Rig. So after Tr Shoe Rig gives you a banish, after Horus gives you a banish, if Dark Ruler No More and Lightning Storm didn't give you a negate and a pop, we got two more pops for ya. Now look. Brought back another card. So look how insane this is. One, two, three, four cards. Link a four. Then we put it all into one. See, this is why this stuff is allowed. People say that having these engines are busted, but it's not busted because all the engines must be consolidated in the end. Because the engines must be consolidated in the end, the end boards can be quantified to front row, back row, graveyard. And if you know that combination and your deck can play through that, you win. That's it. Now we're going to go ahead and draw. <laughs> I tried to use this. It wasn't working. <laughs> I tried to use that. It wasn't working. I think I took out, um, actually... I think it was evenly matched. Yeah, I took out evenly matched and I tried to use gamma. It just wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, it was pr yeah, pretty sure it was evenly matched. Now, the reason why I was using that was because sarcophagus lets you send cards back so you can afford to run a garnet. But then I found that with the distribution rate and all that other stuff, we were starting to edge on that hyper consistency. And hyper consistency was giving us actual bricks. <laughs> so we had to get garnets up out of here like uh, like this. But I totally forgot that we was running that instead of even left. But yeah, basically, I found out that that's just not good for me. Now, this is the reason, another reason why I love this deck. Because we run Horus, this is the benefit of the Horus deck. Funny enough. We do have a monster to send attacks to for Domitianus. This card says not only does it negate the first effect or a spell trap played in general, so this got to be your last card played, but also this card says when it destroys a monster by battle, you can destroy a face up card, a uh, face up monster your opponent controls. So watch this. So into into the next turn now the reason why we're playing the gladiator beast the way we're playing it is because we're we set up to win on turn three demoralization win on turn three win by battle in turn four basically is the process but sometimes if the game goes past four and three we have the resources to play beyond those those turns but it is what it is so first off the first act gets negated by number 23 lancelot so the first act is negated. Get this card up out of here. So his second act is the normal summon and try to get the fusion. Obviously, he's losing the resource game. Negate. As he already lost branded fusion, <laughs> he wasn't going to draw it. You can only play one of those. And it got popped. Now he tries to battle. Tries to attack with 18. Now he's probably just trying to attack and like, you know, in the duel, you know, take his life points. But when he attacks, you can use Domitianus to take the attack and send it into another monster. And we'll use it to send it to number 23, Lancelot. Lancelot deals damage, kills a monster, and you're gonna be able to take another one with him. So that's pretty disgusting. That's a combo I never had access to before, 
because now I use Horus and there's many more combos we have access to now that we have Horus engine in our deck. So join me, my boys, with the like and subscribe button for season 32 all through August as we stream and upload videos and learn the power of hypergeometric distribution. All right, finally, I want to talk to you guys about Inseti and the new Horus cards within my new Gladiator BZ deck. Now listen, in Season 32, I plan on exploring this deck because while dueling and utilizing the AI, we have come to a conclusion that this could be the perfect build. The one build that we need to take it to master rank as it allows us the third additional archetype and summon with the addition of the Mseti engine as two of the or three of the mainstream monsters are within the tri area of beast, beast warrior and wing beast. Now that being said, I want to point out this hand that I have above that shows the hyper geometric distribution rate in action but also shows the synergy of the rule of two because this is a wing beast monster that synergizes with my tri brigade. Also Mseti synergizes with tri brigade. These are my go second board breakers which synergizes with one another. And before I get things going um, with my combination at all, evenly match works well with the Horus engine going second. And then also, Playing through my Horus engine completely not only allows me to search through my Tri Brigade line, but it also lets me set up um, Frigid without normal summoning. And basically, by getting into this card and not normal summoning, I'm going to have an additional special summon, which is going to let me combo off pretty much as much as I want. But the idea of comboing off is to put so many threats on the board that either my opponent has to respond or we eliminate all threats. And once we do that, we can use the one Tri Brigade card that we opened with originally that has been cycled through and more than likely is either another copy of Kit or Tri Brigade Fractal. Who's to say after we've drawn a card and potentially drawn and sent the card back who's to say but we still are working with one tri brigade monster so because that is the case we're going to be able to execute our combo by summoning dragasis from the deck which aligns the rest of the one card combo for game so that being said i wanted to show you guys one replay as we got a chance to practice um, this deck and you can see the hypergeometric distribution uh, in action on top of you know RNG plus luck coming together so yes my boys this is it in a nutshell this is the secret technique that I have discovered from utilizing and wrestling with the AI over this last month and I want you to become a dueling engineer as well use the links in the description to access the app for free and ask the AI questions about your deck and see if you can utilize the hypergeometric distribution to improve your gameplay and your competitive odds against the meta